So the inner wall of the stomach is raised into a number of folds called rugae. The villi are highly vascular and each villus contains smooth muscle fibers. So the cecum is the region where ileum of the small intestine opens into the large intestine and millions of symbiotic microorganisms are present. Hello everyone. Welcome back to session 3 of this chapter called Digestion and Absorption. Moving across the remaining important concepts of this very important physiological process called Digestion and Absorption. Hope you remember in the last session we studied about the uh, esophagus, then we studied about the pharynx. In today's session we are going to study about a very very important storing part of our digestive system that is the stomach and we all know the stomach plays a very great role in the process of uh, digestion as you know it is a storing organ so whatever food we eat finally uh, is stored in the stomach and thereon the process of digestion is going to happen. So what is stomach? So now let us understand how important this part of the digestive system is. So stomach as you know the esophagus leads into a large bag like structure called stomach. So here you can see the here you can see the stomach here. So this is the whole part of the stomach which is divided into three portions. One is called fundus, second one is called uh, cardiac and the third one is called pyloric stomach. So fundus, cardiac stomach, then pyloric stomach. So here this is the picture of a stomach. See how big it is, the very important and a large portion of the digestive system is nothing but the stomach. So it is a J-shaped organ. So how does it look? It is a J-shaped muscular chamber about 30 centimeter long. So the length is 30 centimeter long and width is width is around 10 centimeter wide. So it is 30 centimeter long and 10 centimeter wide. So as I said it is divided into uh, four, three parts actually. It is divided into three uh, four parts. So actually this forms the after the fundus cardiac body. So this will form the body then the pyloric stomach. So it is divided into four parts namely cardiac, fundic, body and the pylorus. The esophagus here you can see the esophagus opens into the stomach. So the esophagus opens into the cardiac stomach and its entrance is guarded is guarded is guarded by a wall called the cardiac sphincter. This cardiac sphincter prevents the backward movement of food from small intestine to stomach. You know the uh, always the flow of food is unidirectional. From the esophagus it goes to the stomach, from the stomach to the small intestine. It will not go back from the small intestine to stomach. So the cardiac sphincter which is a wall like structure, wall which is a wall like structure which is going to prevent the backward movement of food from small intestine to stomach. So the esophagus opens into the cardiac stomach and its entrance is guarded by a wall called cardiac sphincter which prevents the backward movement of food from small intestine to stomach. So the inner wall of the stomach is raised into a number of folds called rugae. So I think all of us know the inner wall of the stomach also has gastric glands which produces a very important uh, acid called HCL. You know this HCL will also help in killing the microorganisms that enter through the food and at the same time it is an activator of 
an enzyme called pepsinogen. So as we know pepsin, trypsin uh, enzymes are not always in an activated state. So they are activated by certain activators. So one such activator is HCL. As we know enzymes have a great role to play in the process of digestion and they act as biological catalysts in mediating the reactions. You know the whole body you know it is like a chemical reaction, chemical factory. So there is a series of chemical reactions taking place in the digestive system that is involved in the process of digestion of carbohydrates, proteins and lipids in presence of enzymes. So imagine morning we have a breakfast and immediately in the afternoon after some two hours we feel hungry. So what has happened to the food what we have taken it is digested but the process of digestion is fastened or hastened by the enzymes. So enzymes are biological catalysts which speed up the chemical reactions. So after two hours again we will have a lunch then again after some break again we feel hungry then we have some snacks in the evening again then we go for a dinner. So imagine the food what we eat is digested continuously in presence of enzymes and the process of digestion is made possible by the very important biological catalyst called enzymes. So the inner wall of the stomach is raised into a number of folds called rugae. The inner wall, the inner wall is also provided with millions of glands called the gastric glands which produces what? HCL. I said you might have come across a very common uh, disorder called acidity. So we are, you would have heard about many a people telling uh, I have acidity. So what is that acidity? So never keep your stomach empty. So when there is no food to act upon then it leads to what? So there is more secretion of HCL and that will lead to acidity. So stomach it is a J shaped muscular chamber about 30 centimeter long and 10 centimeter wide. It is divisible into four parts. Named the main three parts are cardiac fundus and pylorus. The main part we call it as body. Then the esophagus opens into the cardiac stomach and its entrance is guarded by a wall called cardiac sphincter which prevents the backward movement of food from the small intestine to the stomach. So the inner wall of the stomach is raised into a number of folds called rugae which will increase the process of absorption also. The inner wall is also provided with millions of glands called the gastric glands. Moving on to the small intestine. All of us know how important this small intestine is. The major portion of digestion of food takes place in the small intestine. So we can say this is the prime player in the process of digestion in the digestive system. So here we can see how it is a highly coiled structure. So it is a highly coiled. So here you can see the stomach. Here you can see the stomach which leads into the here you can see the stomach which is leading into the small intestine. So it is the uh, highly coiled structure and Small intestine is divided into three parts, duodenum, jejunum and third part is called ileum. So what are the three very important parts of small intestine? That is duodenum, jejunum and ileum. So the stomach, from the stomach the intestine starts with the first part of the small intestine called duodenum, next comes jejunum, next comes ileum. So the small intestine is a long coiled tube 5 to 7 meters. So it is a highly coiled structure. Here you can see highly coiled structure. It is a highly coiled structure. So 5 to 7 meters long and about an inch in diameter. So 1 inch in diameter. So it can be divided into three regions namely duodenum, jejunum and ileum. The inner lining of the small intestine is produced into a large number of minute finger like projections called villi. Very very important. So villi are the major uh, uh, you can say parts which do the process of absorption. Absorption. So this increases the area of digestion and absorption and the wall of the small intestine also contains number of intestinal glands which produce intestinal juice. As I said it even this all intestine also plays a very great role in producing certain intestinal juices which is very much important for the process of digestion of the final carbohydrates, proteins and lipids. 
So I repeat, so what is small intestine? The small intestine is a very important part of the digestive system, which is a long coiled tube around five to seven meters long and about an inch in diameter. It is divided, it is divided into three regions, namely duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. The inner lining of the small intestine is produced into a large number of minute, I'm, anyhow I'm going to show it in the next slide, how the villi looks. The, the finger-like structures called villi and what is a very important function of villi or these finger-like projections? These increase the area of digestion and absorption. So the wall of the small intestine also has a number of intestinal glands which produce certain secretions called intestinal juice. So here you can see the structure of the finger-like projection. So the wall of the inner lining of the wall of small intestine has finger-like projections called villi. So here you can see the finger-like projections with central lacteal capillaries, epithelial cells and artery. So here structure of a villus. The surface of the intestinal mucous membrane is covered with minute finger-like projections called villi which give the surface a softy velvety appearance. So what is the very important function of uh, this villus? As I said, it is a major portion which helps in digestion and absorption. The surface of the intestinal mucous membrane is covered with minute finger-like projections called villi which give the surface a soft velvety appearance. The villi are highly vascular. Vascular means what? Supplied with blood vessels. They are, the villi are highly vascular and each villus and uh, is made up of smooth muscle fibers. So structure of villus is what? Uh, so here you can see the artery that is, it is supplied with blood vessels, then with epithelial cells and musk, right? The, the surface of the intestinal mucous membrane is covered with minute finger-like processes called villi which give the surface a softy velvety appearance. The villi are highly vascular and each villus contains smooth muscle fibers. So the surface of the villi are covered by a single layer of epithelial cells. Here you can see a single layer of epithelial cells. And we also know that epithelial cells form the lining of the internal organs. As you know, they, they, they are mainly involved in the process of protection. So they are very important for giving internal protection to the internal organs. Hence, they are called, a, they are very important epithelial cells. So the surface of the villi are covered by a single layer of epithelial cells, which have a brush border forming thousands of microvilli. So the surface of the villi are covered by a single layer of epithelial cells which have a brush border forming thousands of microvilli. The microvilli further increase the total absorption area of the small intestine. Then between the villi lie simple tubular glands called the crypts of Libercun which secretes an alkaline uh, intestinal juice called succus enterica. So between the villi lie simple tubular glands the called the crypts of Libercun, called the crypts of Libercun, which secretes alkaline intestinal juice called succus entericus. So the surface of the villi are covered by a single layer of epithelial cells which have a brush border forming thousands of microvilli. The microvilli further increase the total absorptive area of the small intestine. Then between the villi lie simple tubular glands the, called the crypts of Libercun which secretes alkaline intestinal juice called succus entericus. So finally, small intestine converts carbohydrates into simple sugars, into simple sugars, then proteins into amino acids, then fats or lipids into fatty acids and glycerol. So this is what is the final job of small intestine. Hence we say small intestine has a great role to play in the process of digestion. Moving on to the next very important part of digestive system called large intestine. So when compared to small intestine, it is not a highly coiled structure. Here you can see the this whole thing is the large intestine. 
So now let us understand about the features of this large intestine. The large intestine which is also called as colon. So this is called ascending colon, descending colon. This is called the descending, ascending and descending colon. Descending colon, right. So the large intestine or the colon is an inverted U-shaped structure about 1.5 meters long and 2 inches in diameter. And it is divided into the following regions called cecum, ascending colon, trans, this is called transverse colon, transverse colon and descending colon, sigmoid colon, this is called sigmoid colon, then rectum and anus. So this is, this is called sigmoid colon, this is rectum and this is anus. This is appendix, vermiform appendix. This is called vermiform appendix. The cecum is the region where ileum of the small intestine opens into the large intestine and millions of symbiotic microorganisms are present. So as I said, many symbiotic microorganisms, see here bacteria also have a great role to play. Uh, here uh, they have a symbiotic association uh, in the small intestine. So the cecum is the region where ileum of the small intestine opens into the large intestine and millions of symbiotic microorganisms are present. A narrow finger-like tubular projection uh, that is the vermiform appendix. Here you can see the vermiform appendix which is a vestigial organ arises from the cecum. What do you mean by vestigial organ? Though it is present, it is of no use. Even if uh, appendix, I think you might have come across uh, uh, surgery being done called appendicitis. That is removal of appendix. Imagine if small intestine or large intestine is removed, then the person will die. But if appendix is removed, nothing will happen to the digestive system. So appendicitis means what? When the appendix grows beyond the size and it is going to disturb the other organs, so then it is removed. And even if it is removed, it is not going to affect the digestive system. So hence it is called as a vestigial organ. Though it is present, it is of no use. But if it enlarges and overgrows, then definitely it has to be removed. And that removal of appendix is called appendicitis. So large intestine, the large intestine or the colon is an inverted U-shaped structure about 1.5 meters long and 2 inches in diameter. It is divided into the following regions called cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, uh, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum and anus. The cecum is the region where the ileum of the small intestine opens into the large intestine and millions of symbiotic microorganisms are present. A narrow finger like tubular projection called the vermiform appendix which is a vestigial organ arises from the cecum. Hope you all have understood the very important parts of the digestive system. As I, uh, as I said, digestive system is a very, very important uh, system of the body which does the major process of digesting the complex organic food molecules into simpler absorbable full food molecules. And it is such a wonderful system having so many important organs like the mouth, then the teeth, then the esophagus, pharynx, then we have the stomach, then the small intestine, large intestine. See how wonderfully with all these important parts, the process of digestion is being done meticulously. So in the coming session, I'll be dealing with the remaining concepts of this chapter called uh, digestion and absorption. Till then, goodbye and thank you.